At this point, we have two parallel tasks available in our task list. We can either perform a temperature reading or begin mixing. If we look at the workflow view, we can see that both tasks are active. Directly after the mixing instruction, the workflow has a wait element that will force us to wait 30 minutes until mixing is complete. I'll select begin mixing. First, I'll need to review the mixing procedure. Then I can enter my mixing speed and humidity values. And perform a signature. You can see that the wait element has been activated and will not allow the workflow to continue until the specified time limit has been reached. While we're mixing, let's move on to the temperature reading task. Here we're asked to input a temperature reading from our solution. I'll enter a value of 20 degrees Celsius and provide an electronic signature. Based on the temperature value that I recorded, the EBR execution has taken the right-hand path. This task instructs me to follow the heating procedure to increase the temperature of the solution to between 25 and 30 degrees Celsius. I'll review the procedure and provide a signature. Now that I've heated my solution, the workflow will loop to the previous task and allow me to record a new temperature. This time, let's record a temperature of 28 degrees. Because the value is within range, the workflow automatically activates the task in the left-hand path. We are prompted not to modify the temperature any further, and then to open valve A. When asked if the value has been opened, if we answer no, then we are not allowed to proceed. The EBR waits for us to confirm the valve is open before continuing. Now that our solution has mixed for the required amount of time, and we've performed our temperature adjustment, it's time to execute a manufacturing declaration. This process instruction asks us to input the quantity per finished goods container and the number of containers that were produced. We'll say we produce three containers at five kilograms apiece. Next, we'll choose the container type and label template that we want to print. We'll click the button to perform our manufacturing declaration and print our container labels. If we take a look at our container inventory for the manufactured lot, we can see that three containers at five kilograms apiece have been automatically created. But since we don't live in a perfect world, let's assume that we didn't produce a perfect batch. What if one of our containers actually only contains three kilograms of material? To account for this, Let's choose to adjust our declared quantity. From the declaration adjustment task, we can identify one of the containers we just declared by scanning its label. Then we can provide an adjustment value to correct its quantity. Let's subtract two kilograms that we lost during the manufacturing process.
When we view our container inventory again, we can see that the container's quantity was automatically adjusted down to three kilograms. Let's complete the adjustment task and move on to our final step. The results task shows a summary of our batch output. As you can see, the theoretical quantity to produce was 15 kilograms. We lost two kilograms along the way and only produced 13. This means our yield was only 86.67%. Since the yield was expected to be greater than or equal to 95%, an error message was produced. An alert has been generated and we are asked to input a comment to explain why our yield is not within range. This comment will need to be reviewed before the batch can be released. I'll input a comment explaining that I spilled two kilograms of material and move on. The final step in the execution is a manager's signature. With that, the execution of this EBR is complete. In the next video segment, I will demonstrate the tools available to review the EBR, release the batch, and analyze the recorded data.